and welcome to another GIS tip. Today, instead of looking at a specific program, what we're going to look at is data acquisition because one of the questions I'm always asked when training GIS is where do we get data from? And the answer is all over the place. Um, data is ubiquitous these days, spatial data um, as well as other types of data. So there are a number of different places you can get them from. So what I thought I'd do is a little series on different data sources that I use quite often and that you might find useful. So today we are focusing specifically on DEMs, which is Digital Elevation Models. And that's a raster layer that will give us an, an idea of what the topography of a region looks like. So here I am in Global Data Explorer. And if you type in Global Data Explorer to Google, that will take you directly to here. You can see there's a number of interested parties. We've got USGS, NASA, etc. And the first thing you'll need to do is log in. So you can hit this login button here and it asks you to log in with another portal called Earth Data. Now, I already have an account with Earth Data, so I'm going to use my login details there. If you don't have an account with Earth Data, then please register. It's a pretty straightforward process, and I don't think you'll have any trouble with it. So if I log in, one thing to note, if you are registering with Earth Data for the first time, make sure that you do come back to the GDEX website. Sometimes it leaves you in a different portal, which will behave differently. So make sure you come back to this one. So now that I've logged in, you can see that I'm logged in here. And we have, it looks very similar to a GIS interface. We've got zoom in, um, zoom to full map, refresh, all kinds of things. So what I'm going to do is choose an area to zoom into. We're going to go back to Central America, why not? Over on the right hand side you've got lots of different areas that you can choose to highlight so we could turn on US state boundaries, cities of the world, we can turn those on, whatever you'd like. And up at the top we have the data coverage as well so if you switch those on it will show you what areas of the world are covered by these DEM tiles. Now I'm going to zoom into Nicaragua uh, just because we should have some interesting topography there. Let's have a look. This area looks pretty cool. And once you've chosen your study area, you can use these tools to define a particular area that you'd like to extract. So I'm just going to define a rectangular area. I'll take this bit. Once you've defined it, you can download the data for that defined area. If you're not happy with your area, you can always clear it using this button, but I'll just take this. And up here, as soon as you choose to download it, you have various different output settings. So you can choose the Aster Global DEM version 2, NGA SRTM finished, or the NASA SRTM version 3. Now I've done some digging around and it looks like the NASA SRTM version 3 is actually the highest quality DEM that you can get from this site. So we've got version 3. The one arc second relates to the resolution of each cell in our DEM. And the resolution of this one is going to be 30 meters by 30 meters at the equator. And the 3 arc second is roughly 90 meters by 90 meters. So I'll choose to download this one. Once you've done that, it will ask you for the format. I'm going to go with GeoTIFF and I would like it compressed into a zip. If I submit that, our request will be processed. This may take a little time, so depending on the size of the area, it will take longer or shorter. The nice thing about this particular portal is that instead of downloading individual tiles, this will automatically stitch them together for you. So there's less processing on your side uh, with that functionality. So here you can see we've got our DEM. This is what it's going to look like. It looks pretty cool. And if you check the metadata, it will tell you what our projection is, WGS84, where it's come from, the size of the raster, etc. So I'll download that. 
it's going to ask where I would like to download it to. I'm going to save it to uh, here we are in our downloads but I would like to save it in my documents and AAA demo as per usual. I'm going to make a new folder for this and call it DEM. I'll put an underscore as well with GDEX after it for Global Data Explorer just so that I can remember where this particular DEM has come from. If you're comparing and contrasting different DEMs can be quite useful just to have uh, an indicator there to remind you which website you were using. So that's that. Um, one thing to note, if you are looking at a larger area, there is a limit on how large an area you can download using this. So let's go to Brazil because it's massive and let's pretend that we would like to download this area of Brazil. Now that's enormous, it's either going to take a really long time to process or it's going to tell us that we've reached the limit. So let's give this a test, it may just crash it. Submit, there we go. And it comes up with a failure message. It says that our area is uh, 637 tiles big which is too large for the product or format selected. Please define a smaller area that's 36 tiles or fewer. Okay, so that was for the SRTM version 3, one arc second. If we go for three arc seconds, too large. With three arc seconds, we've got a limit of 50 tiles. So if you do hit that limit, the next thing to do is to divvy this up so that you've got smaller areas. And if you are divvying up, I would say always make sure that you overlap and then you can mosaic them later on. So that might be one of your downloads and then you do another download there and another one there, etc. So you keep doing that until you've covered your area and then you can use your GIS later on to actually stitch these together. Now that my download's complete and I've got everything I need, first things first, let's unzip it. So I'll just right click on the zip folder and go to extract files. I'm just going to extract them here because this is all I have in this folder. And you can see all we've got here is a TIFF, um, a GeoTIFF file. So we don't actually have any metadata saying where it's come from. Hence why it's a good idea to put this little addendum at the end of your folder name so you can remember where it's come from. So this is our GDEX. You might even want to add, you might want to rename this so that you have a little bit on the end that says NASA SRTM version 3. That could help you as well. So you can just remember exactly what the data is that you've got. Our Windows has gone a little strange there. Refresh and we're all good. Okay, so I've renamed that. I know where it's come from, what in fact it is showing. And in QGIS now, if I go to add a raster layer and I choose my NASA SRTM, open that up, and there we are. We have a DEM. It looks like a pretty interesting part of the world in DEM terms. Um, so that's kind of cool. Could spend all day looking at these, but I'm not going to. That's how you can get DEMs for free. There are plenty of other sources, plenty of other providers of DEMs. This is just one example. So thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe or check out more videos for more tips.